If you're watching this video, maybe you're interested in Story Park, but you're just not quite ready to start a trial, or maybe you just don't know where to begin. So I've made you this quick video to show you the main features of Story Park and to take you under the hood. I'm going to show you things like documentation, reporting, planning, and family engagement. So the first feature I'm going to show you is the stories. And stories is where you would document a child's learning. And once you've created a story and published it, it instantly goes out to any parents and family members connected to the child. So that includes perhaps the grandma on the other side of the world or the uncle who might not be physically near the child but really still wants to be part of the child's journey and learning. To create a story, click on this Create a Story button here. Quite nice and obvious. And it brings you to our story editor where you can add text, images, videos, and PDFs to a story. I'll just enter a quick story title here. Here you can change the font color, font type as well. So we'll just change that. You can change the background color of a story as well. You can change the date to reflect on when the actual learning um, or the story occurred. So let's say that what I'm documenting occurred on Monday. Then you can add text and images, and you can add as many or as little to the story as you want. We'll add some images featuring some Story Park staff members, including myself there. So the Story Editor is built using what is called blocks. So much like Lego, you can pick up a block and move it to anywhere else. So you can drag it and drop it, and it will auto scale to fit um, where you put it. The whole story park is also optimized to be displayed on any device. So even if you're using an iPad or tablet, phone, anything at all to use story park, the stories will be optimized to display as best as they can on that device. Next, you can select who's in the story. You can select one child or multiple children. Um, you can even select the whole room into a story as well. Then you can add learning tags to your story. Um, learning tags are things like your curriculum, your framework, your philosophy, anything you might want to tag and report on and to, um, yeah, to get parents engaged and to, even for things like teacher appraisals or accreditation or assessment and rating. Anything that you'd want to tag in a story, you can tag it. So you can see here I've got the EYLF outcomes here. If I click on this drop down menu, I can select um, other learning tags that I might have loaded. I can select a folder within the EYLF. So say I just want to see the identity outcomes, I can click on that. If I want to see the description of the tag, I can hover over it. So educators don't have to remember all of the outcomes. Um, and then I can just click on it to add it to the story. So parents can also see the outcomes as well. And this really helps to get them engaged in what you're doing in their child's um, learning and development. So that's my first story. Now I can hit publish. And once I hit publish, that goes out immediately to all of the family members of all of the children connected to that story. And they can now comment on it. They can view it on any device. They can use the Story Park for Families apps to um, view the story as well. I'll show you some other stories um, that we've made earlier, just so you can get a feel of what, others, um, of what kind of things you can do with stories. So you can see here we've added a video as well to the story. Um, we've added learning tags. And you can see who's posted the story as well. So that gives the parent a personal connection to um, whoever's posted it as well. And it doesn't just come from the center, but from the educator that posted it. The next feature I'm going to show you is the community post feature. And the community post feature is meant to be a replacement for your notice board. So you can do things here like newsletters, um, announcements, um, anything that you want um, the community at large to know. So I'll bring you to the community feature here. You can see here we've done a community post about group sewing, uh, about sewing. We've, we've also let um, parents know about a new staff hire as well, and things like um, ideas for parents to do at home as well. So um, much like perhaps your notice board at the center, this is meant to replace that and be a 24-7 always available notice board that parents can access at any time. Again, you can just add text to your um, notice. And you can add images and videos and any files. So you could even attach things like permission forms 
um, and let parents know about excursions um, or get parents to volunteer to help out at those excursions as well. So the centre has a community area, but also every room has a community area as well. So perhaps I want to post a notice just for infants, for parents of um, children in the infants room, I can post a community post in this specific room. So the next feature I'm going to run you through is conversations. And much like um, on, our, on social media platforms where you can send a direct message or a private message to somebody, you can send a conversation within Story Park to um, another educator or perhaps a parent of a child. That way you can have a private conversation with them, you can ask questions, share feedback. Again, you can attach files, images and videos to that conversation. This conversation at the top right of Story Park you can, um, enables you to create that conversation. You can also create community posts right from that button as well. So the next feature I'll run you through is the planning feature. And the planning feature is where you do all of your programming. So that's things like perhaps you want to do a transition statement or um, an all about me plan for a child. Um, basically anything. This planning feature has been made so that you can do any sort of thing that relates to your programming on Story Park. So I can, create a, I can click the create a plan button and it brings up a list of templates um, that have already been built into Story Park or I can create a blank plan. For this example, I'll just create um, an all about me um, plan. So you can see here the template comes with already fil filled out fields and all you have to do is fill it out. This all about me template is one that you would use to send out to, um, to parents before their child starts at your center um, so that they can give you more information about their child and you can make that first day for that child a real win. So with planning, there's three um, types that you can make a cell. You can um, make it a header, so you can just add a title to the plan. Or you can tag children into the plan. You, again, you can tag multiple children. You can tag a whole room into the plan if you want. Or you can add content to the plan. And this is where you do your observations, your notes, um, and anything to, that relates to your plan, you'd write it here. Again, you can add images, videos, and files. Um, and the really neat feature about planning is you can link your stories, plans, and notes into the plan. So I can add um, this welcome to Story Park story that we've just created into the plan. And I can add my observation or my notes or whatever I'm writing about in my cycle of learning and save that cell. So now I've got one plan which has everything I need that relates to this um, particular thing that I'm recording. And I don't have to jump between different fields, different apps, um, different pages. It's all here in this one plan. I can enter in a plan title. So I can say all about me. And then I can, I can add a category to the plan. So perhaps I want to be able to sort out plans and um, by specific categories, I can you know, add any sort of category I want and even create new categories. I can see all the activity created on the plan. I can also save it as a template to reuse it again. And I can share it with other educators and with parents of children that I might have tagged in this plan. Plans by default start as private to you. So that enables you to do things like um, teacher only notes, or perhaps you want to create a plan, a self review plan, or share a plan specifically only between you and your mentor. You can do that all in planning. So you can save it. I'll quickly open up for you one that um, we created earlier and got parent input from. So this is an all about me plan that has been filled out. You can then see here that the parent has gone ahead and filled it out and commented on it. Parents can only comment on plans and not edit it, so your hard work is, um, won't be edited or removed in any way, but they just add to it with comments. So you can see here, we can see the child's special requirements, photos of the child and the special people in the child's life and all this other information, even before the child has started their first day. That way, when the child comes in, we can already make them feel welcome. Each room has its own planning area as well. So perhaps I have um, infant's room specific plans or kindy room specific plans. I can move a plan to a room if I want to as well. Um, and I can also um, edit a template if I need to so that um, if I ever have a, a template that I've created but I want to edit it or I want to delete it, um, I can edit it here from the templates tab.
So the next feature I want to show you in Story Park is children. What good would Story Park be without the children? With children, you can um, edit their profile and add profile pictures. You can also export their portfolio at any time. So if ever you need to have a copy of their stories and notes um, from within Story Park, perhaps on a hard drive or a USB, you can click this export portfolio button um, in the child settings page and have a copy of it downloaded um, at any time. Even when a child leaves your center and you remove them from Story Park, um, parents have free access to their child's profile for as long as they want. So they'll still have access to the stories and notes and be able to um, share that with perhaps the child's you know, next school that they're moving on to. Next, I want to show you the learning sets feature. And we went through it a little bit earlier in the stories. Um, in the learning sets page, you can actually choose which learning sets show up when you create stories. So we have um, our learning sets, which shows you all the learning sets that you've already got loaded onto your Story Park. You've also got the public sets area where Story Park and the greater Story Park community have created learning sets and shared them with, um, with the rest of Story Park so that you, can, you don't have to recreate the wheel. You can look up national curriculums, um, philosophies and frameworks and find what you need here and just copy them to your Story Park. So to load a public set to your Story Park, just click on, you can search, search for the one that you want. Once you've found it, you can click on it and it will load that public set and you can just click on copy to your learning sets. Perhaps you have, um, perhaps you want that learning set, but you want to edit it. Once it's loaded to your learning sets, you can edit it yourself to be customized to your specific um, learning service and your environment. Next, I want to show you the reports feature. And the reports feature really shows why tagging stories with learning tags is really important. So in the reports feature, we've got four reports, learning trends, teaching trends, children activity, and teacher activity. Learning trends shows all of the learning tags that have been used in um, children's stories. So you can really get an idea of what children are um, achieving and working towards in their development. So with the reports feature, you can ch change the date range that you report on. You can report on specific children. You can report on specific tags as well, and you can report on specific sets or folders as well if you'd like. You can even do a split view so you can um, compare two different um, sets of children and see the kind of development that uh, is occurring um, between the two children. So you can see here the learning tags that we've used. And if I click on it, I can see all of the stories that the tag has been um, added to. I can see the description as well. I can also see it in a pie graph form if I'd like to, and in the learning tag cloud. So the bigger the learning tag comes up, the more that it's been used. If you're an admin, you have access to admin-only reports, such as teaching trends and teacher activity. The teaching trends reports enables you to see what kind of learning tags teachers are using in their stories. So again, you can see the, the learning tags that teachers have used in the stories. Um, you can see it in a bar graph form or a pie graph form or as a learning tag cloud. You can even report on specific teachers as well to show you which teachers were working on what. The children activity report is one that really helps you to ensure that no child is invisible. You can really see at a quick glance um, how many stories have been created for a child uh, when was their last story created, what kind of stories, how many times they've been viewed and commented on, and um, how many notes you've written for that child as well, and how many family members are connected to that child. Um, you know, a lot of centers, they might have um, you know, a standard to create a story you know, maybe once a month for a child, and this really helps to ensure that no child is being missed out. The teacher activity report, again, is an admin-only report and enables the admin to see when a teacher was last logged in, how many times they've been logged in, and when was their last story, and what kind of stories and comments and posts they've been posting on StoryPack. Lastly, I'll show you the teacher portfolio feature. Every teacher that signs up to StoryPack has their own portfolio, which can travel with them throughout their career. In the, in the teacher portfolio area, you can see all the conversations that you've been a part of. You can see the children's stories that you've written, and you've also got your My Portfolio area. This is where you can create stories for yourself 
that relate to perhaps your professional development and learning. To create a portfolio story, again, you click the Create a Story button. And when you select who's in the story, you just click My Portfolio. So here's some examples of teacher portfolios that we've created. We've written one about um, showing our teacher registration criteria. And we've written a comment to show what that relates to. And we've used learning tags that relate to our teacher registration so that um, we can report this to our mentor, to our appraiser, and show them exactly what we've been working on. With portfolios, they can they can be private to yourself, or you can even choose to share them with specific um, educators if you'd like, so admins or any other educator that is part of your service. If you ever need any help with StoryPark, there's this Need Help button at the bottom right of StoryPark, which you can click on, access our Help Center, or ask us a question at any time. So that's all the features that we're going to run through today. Perhaps you're wondering about things like pricing, or um, you still have other questions about StoryPark. If you have any other questions, you can go to storypark.com and access information for yourself, for organizations. Um, you can access pricing information and more information about us and support as well. So that brings us to the end of our tour of Story Park. Hopefully that gives you enough information to take the next steps.